Leading up to the release of Christopher Nolan's new film, Tenet, I'm reviewing each of his films in release order. We're in week three. That means we're talking about Insomnia, the forgotten Christopher Nolan film. So let's talk about it. Insomnia tells the story of a big city detective going to a small town in Alaska to investigate a murder. But when his partner ends up getting killed in the line of duty, things get a lot more complicated. So in a lot of ways, this is Christopher Nolan's first big studio film. His first film following budget was under $10,000 and he just made it with his friends. Then he got some notice from independent studios that funded him around a little bit under $10 million to do Memento. He got some significant actors to be in that, but it wasn't necessarily a big studio project. But the movie got the big studio's attention, so Warner Brothers hired him to do the movie Insomnia, where not now they know he can make a good movie, they know he can write a good movie, but can he work inside of the studio system with all the expectations that kind of go along with that? And that's essentially what this movie was. It was his proving ground. They gave him a budget of about $45 million and three powerhouse actors at the time with Al Pacino, Robin Williams, and Hilary Swank in the lead. And the question was, we know he can do indie, but can he move into the big leagues? Can we trust him with something bigger. Now, before I start diving more into it, be sure to tell me what do you think about the movie Insomnia? Tell me down below in the comment section. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you think it's like the most underappreciated of the Christopher Nolan films? Or do you think it kind of belongs as the forgotten one as it's the least Nolan of his films? Let me know your take down below in the comment section. With that said, let's get started talking about the good. In a lot of ways, this is the least Christopher Nolan of all the Christopher Nolan movies. And in its own way, that makes it kind of loop around and become interesting interesting again. This is actually a remake of, I believe, a Swedish film, and he wasn't even the primary screenwriter on it. He's not even credited as a screenwriter, even though he did do some uncredited rewrites on the script. But this is essentially Christopher Nolan being a director for hire for a studio for this crime investigation film, and he does a very good job of capturing one of these stories. Now, while if you just read the synopsis, it sounds like a lot of other movies just like this out there where you have a detective going in to try and solve a murder, but it's it has a lot more nuance to the traditional film like this. Just at its core, there is a bit of this gimmick about them being in this place in uh, Alaska where the sun is out 24 hours per day during this time of the year, and so the lead detective has insomnia, and so that his mental capabilities throughout the film are deteriorating as it goes along. And at its core, it's even less about solving the murder mystery, because we kind of know pretty early on who it is, and it's much more about the journey of this character in dealing with his past, of mistakes that he's made, his legacy as a detective, and the consequences of all of these choices on this particular investigation. And when you can put it all together, while the synopsis sounds familiar, the movie itself is quite good inside of this genre. And another reason for that is it's just kind of jam-packed with pretty great performances. Of course, you have the fantastic Al Pacino in the lead as this confident detective that's very good at his job, but is distracted by all these things kind of going on around him, whether it is this sort of investigation that is into him, not the investigation he's doing, but the investigation into him and his past, whether it's the simple fact that he's struggling with insomnia, all the complications that happens with the story. And so then he's trying to navigate this investigation and stop a killer while it's not quite that simple for him while you're having to see him try to be this great detective while being incredibly tired at the same time. So a lot of complexity to that. Then you also have a super creepy performance from Robin Williams. Right in this window of time, he did a couple of these movies where he played these weirdo types that were stalking people and stuff like that. And I mean, he just does it so well. He abandons all of the comedy, all of the one-liners, the quick wit and all of it. And he just plays into this character that's trying to manipulate this detective that's compromised in specific ways. And he just does a great job of being so confident 
kind of believing himself to not truly being this victim. He believes himself to actually be very much in alignment with this detective in a lot of ways and that they really do need to work with each other while he's trying to manipulate him. And there's all sorts of dynamics in that that are really interesting as the story goes along, especially because typically the way that these stories work is like you're trying to resolve this stuff at the end of the movie, but that's not the way this one plays out. It's much more revealed earlier than you would normally expect. And then it's about the cat and mouse, the back and forth between their two characters. And then the third kind of main character in here is played by Hilary Swank as this Alaskan police officer who's in way over her head. She's not used to dealing with anything like this, a murder investigation, and therefore it's all new to her. And so she's fascinated by all of it. And early on, she kind of makes a fool of herself because she's so unaccustomed to thinking on this level. And so you kind of think she's a dummy at the beginning. And then as it goes along, it turns out that she's incredibly competent. She's just not hasn't had to behave and use a certain set of skills that she has. And so it's a lot of ways she has her own kind of arc of becoming a really good detective throughout the film and discovering what her character is and what you have to do in these complex situations. And because of that, where this movie really shines is on the characters and their dynamics with one another more so than even necessarily the mystery side to it, which plays out pretty early on in the story. So instead, you're watching these three characters as they're looking into one another. They're trying to manipulate each other, trying to figure things out, what's going on. And each of them has their own arc because of that. And I think that's what makes this film pop um, at, inside of a genre that, especially at that point in time, was very played out. There are a lot of movies about killers and detectives trying to track them down. And of course, because this is a Nolan review series, we got to talk about Nolan's addition to the film. Now, of his movies, as I mentioned before, this is kind of the least Nolan. It's not it's linear by the way that it's told. It's not distorting time or bringing in any of these crazy ideas. So this one is all about just the craft of directing a movie. And before this, you know, he'd done following where he showed that he could do something that looks pretty good for no money at all. And then he told, made a really great story that was in reverse with uh, Memento. So this one is the test of how good is he at just really making a professional film with a big budget that um, can afford to do some stuff, but without any gimmicks, without being able to rely on switching the order or trying to outsmart you with the script. But can he just direct a film and get control of these big, gigantic acting personalities? And he absolutely can. And you know, certainly as we'll go into the criticisms and stuff like Least Nolan, so it doesn't necessarily have his flavor to it, but what he can do right out of the gate, the first time he was given a budget, is make a movie that absolutely compares wonderfully to any other film like this. Whether it's in kind of the way that he shot dialogue scenes and these intentional choices that he made to like really move the camera up close. And there's a bunch of interviews with Nolan and Pacino where they talk about that. Like Nolan had this specific mindset of like, what would get that performance out of the actor? And how do you make it feel intimate as he's having this intimate phone call? You put the camera right in his face. So he knew how to do that. There's all sorts of just gorgeous shots of Alaska and side of it of just these large scale shots that he couldn't have done that on the budget, certainly a following, but even Memento, he couldn't have done these crane shots, these helicopter shots. And so you can see them here and just setting this a gorgeous uh, environment right out of the gate. And even beyond that, just the use of colors in certain ways of it's very muted. There's a lots of grays, blacks and whites throughout most of it until you get to the hotel and suddenly it's very warm in the colors that they choose. And those kind of decisions that show someone that just knows they have an image in their head of the whole film before they started. Nolan had that here. He got out great performances, which is one of the key jobs for a director and was able to balance tone, tell a coherent story, and um, made a very solid psychological thriller murder investigation story. From there, let's move on to the bad. Now, this is an interesting one to discuss the bad on it because it's not a movie that really made any big missteps where I would call out this scene or this plot line or he the acting was poor by this actor. Everything is competently done and put together. But as I've mentioned several times before, it it's very familiar in nature. 
We've seen a lot of movies like this, or at least I've seen a ton of movies like this, in which case, while it's all professionally done, acted wonderfully, and it is distinct inside the genre of Nolan films, it feels like the one that has almost the, the least ambition. It's trying to do, it's not trying to do anything that's gonna blow your mind. When you look at most Nolan films, when he's writing that script, it feels like he starts out with some very interesting idea about amnesia, about time, about dreams, about space. And there's something inside of it that's just like, that's really interesting inherently. And he's trying to tell an ambitious story that's exploring ideas. And that's not really what you get here. This is a, in a lot of ways, a fairly straightforward murder investigation movie with more interesting than normal and more nuanced than normal characters. And so while it doesn't really misstep, it doesn't kind of go to these really big heights that you'd expect. Even some of the stuff about insomnia, that's the title of the movie, it plays throughout the film, it doesn't really explore insomnia. You just have a character in it that because of the uh, because of the stuff that he's struggling with, because the sun is shining, he just never can adjust. And so he's not sleeping. So he's impaired. That's a plot line. But like it's not like insomnia is explored. It doesn't go to deep depths of what does ex insomnia mean? For it's not a Nolan exploration of lack of sleep. It's just a plot line inside of the film. And while it is interesting to watch a Nolan movie where he wasn't the one that came up with the story, he wasn't the primary script writer, and therefore it's what does Nolan do as a director for hire, that's kind of interesting of itself. The movie itself, because it doesn't have those big Nolan ideas that he works through with his kind of writing partners, whether David Goyer or his brother, Jonathan, it's just another one of these movies done really well. And that makes it the one that I probably rewatched the least. I mean, I saw it in the theater opening weekend when it came out, and I think this was only the third time I've ever rewatched it. I rewatched it a couple years back when Dunkirk came out to do my ranking of the Nolan films, and then I watched it now. But it's not one that I feel the need to explore again. And it just doesn't have that Nolan feel to it, though it's a very well-made movie. Real quick, before I give you my final score on this one, be sure to tell me what you thought down below in the comments section. Have you even seen Insomnia? Have you even heard of Insomnia? It seems to be the one that um, the most people forget is a Nolan film. Love to hear your take on that. Also remember, since I'm reviewing all of his films, they'll be right up here in this playlist. I would love it if you would check them out and join me on this journey. Of all the movies in this Christopher Nolan series, this is the one that I've had the toughest time figuring out how to review because I just have to review it as a normal film. And even going into the series, I had all these plans to kind of dive into his writing process, the big ideas he wanted to explore. And since that's not really what this movie is, it's just him as a director for hire showing Warner Brothers that he can direct a big studio film. I just kind of have to review it the way I would review any other film. And that's to say it's a very solid psychological thriller, not the most memorable, but a very well-made film nonetheless. Overall, Insomnia is a B plus. On the entertainment scale, it's a 7.5. And if you're into this genre, it's worth checking out. And of course, if you're a Nolan fan, you gotta watch all of his movies. If you've enjoyed this review and wanna check out the rest of my Nolan reviews, check out that playlist right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking. Talking movies too much.